Julius, Yamaha CL5. This uh, this represents something very new and different. Indeed. But in many ways, something old and familiar. Hmm. Same operability as the CL. Yeah, M- look, M7CL. Yeah, it? look, I mean, Yamaha's um, sort of gone gone uh, a couple of paths in their consoles. If we think back to the PM5D, this, this represents such an advancement. The CL5 and, in fact, the CL1 and the CL3 as well all run via Dante. And uh, Dante is an open protocol, um, and the licensing on it's very reasonable, which is good. So the CL3 I've seen, what's the CL1? CL1's a smaller CL3. Okay. We've got different channel limitations. We start at 48 channels on the one plus uh, stereo returns up to 72 channels on, on this, this guy. On this puppy, yeah, mm. which is quite a lot. Um, and that's, that's a big advance over, say, the M7. And I think, look, in fairness, the M7's filled, filled a, lot of, a lot of niches for a lot of people. And still is. Uh, M7CL would be the single most successful... Lower professional. When I say lower professional, that's an entry level professional board. Yeah, and I mean if you look at, I think the the M7 was about 30k retail when it was. When well, it I was think sort it of started new. started more than that. Yeah, I, I think it's around that now. This the CL5 um, console, two Rio boxes, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, all cased nicely, is around the 50k mark. Mm. So that's pretty good for a touring package. Now you had a look at networking this uh, the other day. Yeah, yeah, and so like what I was going to say to you was um, uh, th- this this sort of because we got the the remote rack option yeah. um, uh, and it's all running via Dante, how you can work this with two consoles is quite interesting. And so what would be really cool, I thought, is if we can get two consoles into the studio. And just like that, I now have two consoles and Mark Condon from Yamaha. Mark, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jimmy. How are you going? I'm going well, mate. Look, we should talk a bit about the whole gain compensation system because the whole, I, I guess, benefit of the Dante networking is that we can now have one set of I.O. down on our stage, run one or two Cat5s out to the front of house, run one to our monitor console. Absolutely. Everyone's sharing the same input. That comes with certain challenges, obviously, one of which is who's controlling the gain structure. Absolutely. So who's controlling the gain structure? Well, look, for the first time, we've introduced gain compensation into the the CL range. So we can have up to four consoles networked together. Mm -hmm. All of them have the ability to control the analog stage of the gain uh, gain structure at the Rio. So physically, there's, there's three stages. We've got the analog. We've got the, uh, the compensation gain within the Rio box itself. And then we've got a digital gain control within the desk itself. So the digital gain control is is just affecting the console that it's being modified on. Exactly right. So you have completely independent digital gain at each console, but then each console at the same time has the ability to dial into the analog stage of the pre within the Rio box and make the adjustment. And it's at that point that the compensation comes into into play. So if someone comes out and starts smashing their DI with an acoustic in the second set because they've you know, put a new battery in there or something, genius, um, anyone can get in and fix that pretty quickly. Correct, correct. Okay. It's at that point then, once you're adjusting the, the analog pre down, the, the, the compensation gain comes into effect. There's no notice, noticeable difference in level across the, uh, the network. Okay, so essentially, um, everyone can trim the signal within their own console individually. Correct. And if one person gets in and dials down the analog input level, the digital will automatically come back up so that the same input level still presents consistently exactly. to every console on the network. So your, your monitor guy goes in and, and adjusts the analog stage of the pre, the front of house guy doesn't have a heart attack because he's just lost 6, 10 dB out of his front of house mix without knowing what was happening. Okay, so we've got the gain thing covered. Now the other thing that sort of tends to freak people out a lot with, with the whole idea of digital cores is what happens, you know, it's like Cat5 cable is basically eight tiny little bits of copper. Um, what happens if someone smashes your, your main piece of Cat5 going from your front of house console up to your rear box on stage? Okay, we've got built-in redundancy on the Dante network. You have the ability to run a primary and a secondary network side by side. Mm-hmm. So if one falls over, the other one will automatically take over. Now, the Dante network is, is, is flexible in that you can run these these consoles in a very simple setup. You can just have a console, a piece of Cat5, a single piece of Cat5 looping between everything and daisy chain. But if you need that redundancy, you can run 
a primary and a secondary network side by side. That way, if one falls over, the other one takes over. And, and they're just, just any sort of standard, decent quality network switch will do the job? Absolutely, yeah. The, the only limitation on the, 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 the channel count or the Dante network is the bandwidth. If you, any, any standard gigabit switch will do the job. Okay. Uh, and notionally, if you're going into a building where there is an existing data infrastructure, you can actually run Dante as just a layer That's of the existing network. Yeah, absolutely. The, wow. flex the, the flexibility of, uh, of the Dante network, uh, it's, it's really powerful like that. You, you can just walk into any building with an existing TCP IP network, plug your devices into that network uh, and, and route your audio. It'll manage itself. It's really, really flexible. So if you want to deploy across multiple multiple sites within a venue, you've got some interesting options there yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. And you can just route it all within the Dante. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's a really flexible system. That's quite interesting. Yeah, it is. Look, the, the fact that it does gain compensation and everyone can get to the analog head amp is, is really cool. Another thing that I really like is the custom fader layers. You've got within each set of banks, you've got obviously your input layers and you can have DCAs, 16 DCAs now rather than eight. Mm. And you can have these custom fader banks, which you can build with you know, channels, aux masters, stereo returns, whatever you want. You can, you can mix stuff up in there. You can have it how you want. Took me a while to figure out how to change the colours. Yeah, yeah, the, and, <laughs> and ironically, there, <laughs> no, but the ironic thing is that when you actually stop and think about it, it's exactly where you expect it to be. Mm. It's, it's in the name page for the channel. So, you know, you hit the channel name button and then you press on the coloured thing and you change your colour there yeah, a bit and easy. it changes all easy the Easy when you know how. Yeah, it is yeah. really easy. And look, I think the, the beautiful thing about this is if you can operate an M7CL, you, you're going to walk onto one of these Agreed. and and you're going to know where everything is. Agreed. I'm an M7CL driver. As far as um, as sound, obviously, some differences in the preamps and so on. Um, I like how this console sounds. Well, I think it's two generations on from M7CL. Yeah, yeah, it is. And look, I mean, there's there's been some advancements there, and um, and look, I I think it's great, and I love the fact that you know that we've got. I mean, don't get me wrong, the the M7CL did have a Cat5 multi-core option. Mm. Um, that ran ether sound, but there were some limitations associated with that. The Dante protocols opened up a lot more options as well. Mm. And don't forget also you get, when you buy the console, you get um, the Dante virtual sound card driver thrown in. So you can actually just plonk your laptop down next to the console and um, record your whole Dante stream mm. multi-track. The other thing is it just feels right. Um, it really does, this doesn't it? It feels good. Wood here and um, I think I, I characterise this as having a sort of a BMW feel where the M7CL was kind of like a Holden Commodore or a Ford. Mm. That, that was my analogy when I first set eyes on this. And yeah, first and look, I mean, the, what I love about it is, is that, uh, I mean, I've spent a lot of time on an M7 and, and it's really hard not to compare this to it, but I think it's, mm. it is a bit unfair to do so. Um, because this, this really does do a lot more, but it does it all in exactly the way you expect it to do it. I think they, they've inherited that lovely, that lovely operability of, of the 7, and, um, and for me, this is a win. Very good.